here we find that, that Satan comes along <laughs> with the sons of God to go to the throne and talk to God. But Satan goes on a mission. And his mission is to find who can, he, he calls to forget about God, to curse God, and turn their backs on God. Yes, mm -hmm. But God not only gives him a mission, but he sends him on a mission to a servant that he wants to test. Yes. See, the Satan should be tired of trying to test those because we see in chapter 1 he had just took all his wealth mm -hmm. and all his family. Mm -hmm. And Job still trusted in the Lord. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. See, in life you have situations and things that come upon us and we tend to forget about God. But all while we're going through, God has not forgotten about us. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So it's even in our weakest and our dearest moment that we need to remember that God has not forgotten about us. Yes. Throughout life, we see how our people have been cast down and overlooked and even forgotten, but God still had us on their mind. Yes, yes, yes. yes. yes sir. We've been beaten, yes. stricken, and even cast down to be belittled and treated as if we were just dust that we walked on. Uh -huh. right. But God right. still had us on his mind. Uh -huh. yeah. yes. Job, Job was an upright man. He, he feared the Lord. Yes. And, and uh -huh. He knew that throughout whatever he may have gained in life or whatever, whatever he had he received in life, he knew it was because of the Lord. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes, he knew that without God, that all of his wealth, all of his family, it didn't mean anything if he didn't know how to give it back. To God. Yeah. So throughout his life, we see patience, we see endurance, and we see how he feared God enough to show his family the way to God. Yes, sir. And it, we kind of question that he really showed his family to God because he did most of the praying. <laughs> he did most of all the sacrifices. He did all, all these things that God wants us to do as a people. Yes. He did it for his family oh. and for his will. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so we know that God loved the Lord so much that he was able to bear the sins of his family. Yes. He sacrificed for them. He gave up offerings for, him, for them. He even went so much to even being able to be so faithful that God allowed him to be tested by Satan himself. Yes. We well, well. find in the text that God said that even though you may take his, you may have his skin, you may have his will, but you should not have his life. Yes. My Lord, my Lord. So Satan leaves in the park on a mission to go and make Job curse God. When we face troubles in life, we know that it's not because of our will or even the sin that we have committed. It's about God testing our faithfulness to reverence Him. Yes, yeah. God yeah. wants us to trust Him no matter what we go through, no matter what we're doing in life. He's trying to show us that no matter what we may have right now, there's always room for something great. He wants us to know that without Him, that we can do nothing. But with Him, we can do everything but fail. Yes, sir. Somebody say, God has not forgotten about me. God has not forgotten about me. You see, in 1831, that time, he was an enslaved preacher. Mm -hmm. He was the first recognized slave to, to lead a rebellion in doing the, the enslavement of African Americans. Mm -hmm. This happened in Virginia, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Also, that's the place where the first slaves were taken to. And throughout, throughout slavery, throughout all these years, that we see how God has allowed our people to, to be cast down, but through it all, they still prevailed. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. They overcame the struggles and hardships because they knew that even though we're in a hard situation right now, our God is able to deliver us. Yes. 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 God is able to deliver you whatever you stand at right now. Yes, whatever the situation is right now, God can deliver you. Yes. Yes. As a people, we can be delivered. Mm -hmm. We know that Moses, who led the children of Israel throughout Exodus and through from, from Egypt, and he got to the Red Sea, mm -hmm. and they began to question his leadership. Yeah. They say, Moses, you have brought us here to let us be captured by Pharaoh and his army. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You brought us here to let us die. Yeah. Well, and so Moses well. called out to God, and he said, Lord, what have you brought us here for to let Pharaoh an uh, army catch us and kill us. Yes, yeah. Yeah. The Lord spoke to Moses and he said, what is that thou have in your arm? Yes. He said, this is a rod. Uh -huh. He said, cast it out. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And the Red Sea split it. Yeah. And they were able to go through without getting captured by Pharaoh or his army. Uh -huh. But once they crossed over, somebody say, once they crossed over. Once they crossed over, once they crossed over the sea came back. Yes. 
and capture Pharaoh and his army. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't know about you, but many times I go through situations and I feel like God is bringing me here to only leave me to be defeated by my situation. Uh -huh. But not only does God bring me out, but he allows my enemies to be caught up in their own trap. Uh -huh. He allows the enemy to work so hard that they defeat themselves. Uh -huh. That no matter if you believe in God, no matter what you believe in God for, he will provide the way. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to know that without a shot of a doubt that no matter what you're going through, no matter what your test is, no matter how God has proven his time, his, his trust rose to you over and over again, that he's still able to be trusted. Yeah. No matter how the enemy is trying to confuse you, conflict you, and even cast you yeah. down, God yeah. is still on your side. Yeah. Yeah. Ezra 3 and 11 reads that. For he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. So it's favor. For the Lord is good, and his mercy endureth forever towards the enemy. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Many of us like to say that we are God's chosen people. That we are God's elites, we are God's people who he will not destroy. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's in our uprightness, in our faithfulness that God will uphold us and keep us. And his mercy will be forever towards us. Mm -hmm. In his mercy, you see, we find faith, we find grace. Yes, sir. We find all those things that God keeps and allows us to go on and live day by day. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. Say, for he is good. Right. And because God is good, we should praise him. Yes. 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 Praise the simply telling God, thank you for what you have done, yes, what you will do, and what you are going to do. Yes. 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 So I want to remember that as a people, God has not forgotten about us. Yes. Yes. And even today, it seems that though that, that our generation, me being young, they, they often question my ability to preach. And they say, you're too young to preach, you haven't been through nothing, how can you... Stand up and teach me when you haven't gone through. How do you know the word as this is you know? But I'm like, I remind what, what God told Jeremiah. He said, don't be afraid of their faith. That's right. right. That's right. He said, don't be afraid of the people that might come yeah. against you. Right. Don't be afraid of those who might try to put you down because I am on your side. Right. Don't be afraid of what you go through because they don't believe in you right now. But you keep trying, you keep pushing, and I will yeah. exalt you. Because yeah, I am God and I can do all things but this. So if I can encourage the youth today, whatever your dreams are, whatever your aspirations are to be in life, don't give up on yourself. Right. Remember that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Yeah. But you got to remember to keep God first in your aspirations. Yeah. Oh, keep God first in your dreams. Yeah. Keep God first in your, if you play sports, whatever you may do. Because without God, you will not get exalted to that position you want. All right. All right. Even as adults, we, 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 we have our jobs and we want to be promoted. We want to have the front the front, the front front part and we want to be right next to the one that says employee of the month or even of the year. But sometimes we're not doing right by our job or God and we don't get that position. Right. Well, so God is trying to humble us in our experience through life. Well, and he says, don't be afraid of their faces. Even though you're going through life, you're going to have people that are going to rise up against you and say, you don't fit the part. You don't look like you should be here. Right. Or I don't want you here. All but right. God is reminding you that he has not forgotten about you. All right. All right. All right. All right. He also told Jeremiah in 2014, he said, for I know the plans I have yeah. towards you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Plans to prosper you. Uh -huh. he, he, he wants us to be exalted. He wants us to prosper. He wants us to go through life knowing that we can become and do Anything we want to do. That's right. Yes. My mom always told me, she said, you can do anything you want to do. You got to just put your mind to it. Yes. Right. Right. And so I, I, I went to school. I always went to a school where it was diverse. I went to Power APEC in performing arts. I learned how to make sculptures and paintings and, and, and how to uh, make what you would call ceramics and, and plates. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And in that group, we had, we had some people that were from India. I had classmate that was, that was Caucasian, and I had uh, this other guy, he, he came from Nigeria, and so in that class, it was like, you had to think above what you normally see in life, yeah, and right. coming from where I came from, I was in the, what you would call the ghetto, mm -hmm. so I was used to seeing people fighting, people cussing and arguing, but when I got to school, it was a, a sign that I had to be a visitor, and not think about where I came from, but think about where I wanted to go. <laughs> 
I was in that position right there in that time. I came home and I told mom, I said, I don't like going to this school because the teacher doesn't look on me. The teacher doesn't call on me, but they would take my work and sell it in art shows and not give me the credit. Wow. They would take my work and display it, but take my name off the bottom of it. Oh. But all the time, they were showing favor to the ones who were Caucasian, the wow. ones who were from Nigeria, but they were using my work. Wow. So I began to wonder why they would use my work and send me in the down and tell me that I had to draw steel life. And when I began to draw um, what, the, what you would call steel life or or uh, life figures that would be personally sitting in front of you, but they would begin to take my work, hide it, and use it in the art shows to get the school money. Lord, but they wouldn't right. give me my portion of my, of my money. Right. Because right. the students got a percentage of the money that they sold the art for. Right. And so I left there and I went on to, to, become, to, to go to IB and I, and I began to enter into Jim Hill. Mm -hmm. And this was a high rank because this was not only another form of APEC, but it was an international form. And so I began to compete with students that I didn't even sit next to. Oh, All right. I didn't know that I was taking a test that would be graded over in India and China, huh. even in Africa. But mm -hmm. I received my scores and teachers said that, why do you come to school and you don't talk to nobody? You, you sit to yourself and you act like you're better than anyone else. I said, my mom's always told me she didn't send me to school to make friends. Right. She sent me to school to get my education. <laughs> All the while that I was going to school, I would miss a couple of days, sometimes weeks and months, but I have what, what is known as sickle cell, and I, I like to say that I, sickle cell don't have me, but I have sickle cell. Oh, right. Even though I would come to school, I may miss months and weeks, but my work still got done, and they would say, how is it that you miss school and your grades don't fall? Right. How is it that you miss school, but you, you still advance as if you have been in class every day. Mm -hmm. So I tell them, I said, even though I'm not in school, I still do my work. Mm -hmm. But most of all, I said, I pray to God every day that he would keep me and take me to where he wants me to be. You can certainly find that as a people that without knowing God, you cannot advance, you cannot go anywhere in life. So I want to say that because God is on your side, you got to know that his grace and his mercy yes. endures forever. All right. Right. Every generation. So even it to you, you today, no matter what you want to be, we, we know the history of our past, how we come from slaves and now we're here, we have all the liberty to do what we want to do, but we still take God for granted. All right. So I want to say today, as a church, God is not forgotten about you. Right. I hear pastors say pray for Mariah's healing and Mariah's blessings and, and even the healing of pastor, but as a church, God has not forgotten about you. Amen. We find in Matthew 16 and 18 what God says, he said, and he was talking to Peter, and he told him, he said, that off Peter. That's right. Simon That's Peter. He said, but upon this rock will I build yes. my church, my church. Yeah. and the gates of hell yeah. will not prevail against it. Yes, he was talking about not, not Peter himself or not Christ himself, but on the faith that yeah. Christ believed yes. in. Yes. His faith was in God. And that God would do anything but fear. He said he knew that God would take him anywhere and God would not leave him. So as I, as I say to the church today, that God has not forgotten about you. Mount Moriah, God has not forgotten about you. He knows what you plan to do, what you plan to build, what you plan to, to hold and have here in the county of Alaska. He, he knows that without him that you can't do nothing. So he's wanting to remind you that God is on your side. All right, all right. And as a person, we often feel because we're going through it alone. We don't have mama or dad to call on. We don't have brothers or sisters to call on. We feel that we are in it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We see that sometimes we may be afflicted with illness. We may be afflicted with death. And we may be afflicted with the peer pressure of our peers. But mm -hmm. God has not forgotten.